Hi, my name is Stefano. Today we will review some basic typography rules. The first question. What's wrong with the text formatting of this file? Probably a lot of viewers think nothing at all. Believe me, this is an example of bad typography. And we see it every day. So let's fix the typography of this document. We first focus on the used typeface. Times is the used typeface. Not only times is the problem, it's also true type version. True type versions of a font lack typographic features. Prefer open type fonts instead or seek for high quality type kit fonts. Rule number one. Good typography starts with picking the right typeface. I select all, command A, control A on PC, and I change the lousy times in Volcom. If you like this typeface, you can download it at the Volcom typeface website. Picking the right typeface already solved a lot of problems. Let's focus on the numerals. Do you see what happened? We get old style numerals with ascenders and descenders. Old style numerals blend well with the rest of the body text. Now go back to times. Do you see? Times, like other non-quality typefaces, lack the old cell numeral feature. I keep this selected and I'm going to the flyout menu in the control bar, open type, and you see proportional old style between brackets. The brackets mean it's not available. So the first thing to do when picking a typeface, check if proportional old style is available. Back to the Volcom typeface. When I'm going to the fly out menu, the open type options, I don't see much brackets. So this typeface has a lot of open type features. And that's good. Before we continue, always check your dictionary. In my case, I'm a Dutch user, so the default is Dutch, but this is English text, so I need to change my dictionary to English. Picking the wrong dictionary can lead to bad hyphenated text. Another thing to check in the options, the Adobe Paragraph Composer. That's a default choice and we keep it that way. Legitors are also enabled by default. What are legitors? Let's focus on these two examples. Especially in this example, the Minion Pro we get an unwanted tangent where the F and the I almost collapse. If I choose legitors, the result is a united glyph. Just remember Enable the feature legitors. A lot of designers love to justify their body text, like in this example. But justifying text the right way is more difficult than you think. First of all, hyphenation must be on. I'm going to the paragraph settings in the control bar. And I make sure Hyphenate is on. 
I deselect my text. Why is justifying text so hard? Because the untrained eye doesn't see the ugly gaps in the text. But lucky for you, amateurs. No, I'm just kidding. InDesign is a great, helpful feature. Let's go to the preferences. Command K. Go to Composition and check Keep Violations and H and J Violations. H and J stands for Hyphenate and Justification. Press OK. See the yellowish color? Yellow means bad justification. And in design shows shades of yellow. We are going to try to banish all the yellow color. So remember, the next thing for the rest of your career, first select your text, go to the options, by now you know where. First we go to the hyphenation settings, and in my experience, this is a good setting. Six, three, three. And most of the time, I also uncheck these buttons. Press OK. And then now, the most important setting of your life. Again, go to the preferences, Justification, and these are my settings. Minus two for minimum letter spacing, maximum two, glyph scaling, 97, 103 for maximum. That's it. Press OK. The moment of truth. Deselect all. Ta ta! No yellow color anymore. Perfect justification. Hanging punctuation. Another important topic regarding justification. Let's go to the right hand side. Notice the hyphen. Another punctuation, like the period sign, and it results in a sort of organic flush, while the left-hand side is a straight line. InDesign has its own solution for hanging punctuation. Simply select the text frame, go to type, and I admit, a bit strange, story, Optical margin alignment is InDesign's hanging punctuation. In this field, we normally set the leading size, so we can come back later to fine tune this. But we already see optical alignment on the right hand side. Let's close the story dialog box and continue with some typographic conventions. I should have done this a long time before. Get rid of the overset text. When it's only a line or two, a quick tip, hold down the Alt, Command and C key and the overset text is gone. The old style numerals blend in perfectly with the body text. But the caps don't. To blend in with the text, all caps in the body text need to be turned into small caps. It may sound simple, but it's not that easy. A lot of typefaces don't have extended features like small caps your client has used the caps lock key. In that case, you need to re-enter the text yourself. 
re-entering text, that's dangerous. Try not to make any typos. Select the text, go to the control panel, and click the small caps button. But how do we know it's a real small cap? Therefore, I show you another trick. Go to the preferences, advanced type, and set small cap to 100%. Press OK. When it doesn't change, then it's a real cap. Does the text turn into all caps? Then it was a full cap. Now the Roman numbers blend in perfectly. Remember, all acronyms must be set in small caps. And of course, in typography you need to know your dashes. Let's focus on the dates. We mean between 1709 until 1711. Therefore, the default hyphen must be replaced by an end dash. While the hyphen is selected, control click for a contextual menu, choose insert special character, hyphens and dashes, end dash. Notice the end dash is thinner and longer than the normal hyphen. I double click the hand tool to zoom in. And let's focus on another common mistake. The wrong apostrophe. Back in the old days, when they were working with lead, what they did was taking the comma character and they moved it upwards. The apostrophe was born. So don't forget, the apostrophe has the shape of number 9. Let's zoom in. Select the wrong character. This is ugly like hell. Avoid wrong apostrophes in your design. Control click. Insert special character, quotation marks, single right quotation mark. Voila, the right apostrophe. The same thing can happen with quote signs. Remember position 69 and your quote signs will never be wrong again. Let's mention a few things before we end this exercise. We didn't focus on font size, leading and a lot of other stuff, maybe in an upcoming movie, but as a rule, the leading is 120% of the font size. Never let InDesign calculate your leading. So never use automatic leading. So I'm going to select all. Notice how InDesign changes the leading automatically when I'm changing the font size. In this case, we have another problem. There are way too much characters in one text rule. As a rule, we use 50 to max 70 characters, including the spaces, in a text rule. In cases like these, I use more leading than the default of 120% to increase readability. That's it. I hope you have learned something about basic typography and InDesign. And please, don't make the common mistakes like apostrophe, etc. Be a good typographer. And be good to me. Subscribe to this channel. Ah, and by the way, we started from this. Do you see the difference? More videos are upcoming. Way more. Bye for now.